All right, so for Christmas, I got this Midland 275 Micro Mobile, and I have not really dug into it too much. I've used it quite a bit, but I haven't tested it to see what kind of power output it's getting. That's what I'm gonna do today, see how, how much power comes out of it, and if it's low, what can I do to try to get the power close to what it should, should be, or close to the advertised numbers. Okay, so for starters, I'm gonna use a digital multimeter with a, it's like a 15 watt dummy load I picked up at the ham fest a couple weeks ago. Be fine to do the job here. Let's see, it's channel two. Yeah, let's do channel two. Now it's gonna be low power. So it's advertised for five watts. And we have uh, 3.6, two. All right, let's go up to the highest low power, which would be channel eight, oops, seven, excuse me. And see what that makes it, if it makes a difference or not. 3.61, it's about the same. Okay, let's go to the high power, 15. And we get six point, or excuse me, five point, it's all over the place. I'm kind of draining the battery, so the power's gonna drop a little bit because the, the car is off. All right, let's go up to the, the higher frequency in 22, 5.6, 5.7. Okay, and let's go check the repeater. The repeaters will, um, instead of 462, the repeaters will be transmitting the 467 range. So that will probably make a difference. Maybe not, 5.6, 5.7. Let's go up to the high end. This will be the highest frequency in the 467 at channel 22 and it's pretty consistent looks like it starts off at 5.7 drops to 5.5 5. all right this is not too good what can we do to fix this well cranking the truck up will probably help it will help because right now we're using about 12 volts and with the truck running we will be running should be around 13.8 volts coming to the radio that will definitely bump it up a little bit I have a nice, clean, short coax here, RG58, that I bought. This is a Radio Shack one, and its quality is not that great. So first thing I want to do, I'm going to change out with some other coax and see if that makes a difference. Uh, so, Okay, now I have a slightly longer RG58 going into B and C, and I had a 239 adapter. I had to put on it. So I have adapters on both ends which theoretically would lower it, but I believe this is higher quality cable. And let's go back and see. Let's start at repeater 22, that was 5.7, and then drop to 5.5. Five. Let's see if it makes a difference. Ooh, six. Well, that doesn't make a difference. All right, let's go to channel one. No, two, do two. We did the same one. That was about 3.6, was it? Four. Okay, so let's go up to seven, four. Let's go up to, I guess 15, we'll do 15 for the high power. 6.4, 6.6, 6 6.7. Wow. So it does make a difference in the cable you use and the connectors. Um, 22, 6.8, hmm, repeaters, 6.3, and the last repeater was 22, 6.2, 6.3, hmm, okay, uh, let's change it out one more time, let's see if we make a difference, I have the same same quality jumper, but this is about a foot shorter. If I change this out, let's see if it makes a difference at all. Probably will not. Maybe, might be a, there'll be a hair less loss in coax, but um, the length itself might, might, might change things up a little bit. So if we go back to channel two, Let's turn the slide on, see if it makes it a little bit better. Yeah, it seems, that's better. Ooh, 
four and a half. Okay. So we went from three and a half to four and a half. Seven. 4.6, 15, 7, and a quarter. Hmm. So changing the length. Makes a pretty good difference. 6.6 .6 on repeaters. Interesting. And 6.6. .6. Okay. So now, what else can we do here? Well, let me crank the truck up and get the voltage higher. Okay, I have a noisy truck, so bear with me. All right, so let's go to one, channel two. Getting 4.8, so we went from 4.6 to 4.8, almost 4.9. So we're getting real close to the five Advertise five watts of power. 4.85. So if we go to 15. Oh, now we're getting 10.4, 10.5. Wow, so we went up quite a bit. The high power really likes the higher voltage. 10.6, 10.7. I got 9.2 on the repeaters. 9.5, 9.1. Okay. 10.5, 10.4. All right. Let me turn the radio on here. All right. Let me turn it off again and see what that, re what that measures at. So 10.5. Now we get 9, 8. Now charge your battery up a little bit. And we're probably sucking the battery down. So looks like if I hold it down it's going to drop more so it looks like we get about two watts of power it's going to keep dropping cranking it what else can I do here well let me change the pl the port that the radio is in let me turn the radio off just to be nice to it and if we move it up to this outlet maybe just a little bit of a maybe one does a little bit better with the amperage than the other one. Let's see how that works out. And I'm going to crank it back up because I want to see the max power. Okay, and let's fire this up. We have about 10 and a half, 10.4. See what we get here. Tomorrow, light decided to take a snooze. Whoa, hello, 13.3. So I'm getting more juice out of this. Hmm, the power port makes a big difference. I mean, the difference has to be that it has a fatter gauge cable or a shorter run from the battery and thus is giving me a little more amps coming out of it because I'm using the factory wiring so I get 13 over 13 watts of power so if we go down to let's see let's go let's use the repeater side 12.3 nice and let's go to the high repeater side 12.1 12.2, 12.13. And if we go back to the low power channels, 4.9. So yeah, we're getting real close to five now. So do seven, 4.95. That's really nice. And then the high power, 13.2. All right, let me turn off the truck. So we're getting 13 point let's go 13.1 it's wiggling around a little bit but 13.1 as the the best power output i've got so far and if we turn the radio off the truck off and we just sit here now we're dropping down one watt solid one watt now it's going to go a little bit lower because it, it is pulling putting a 
a drain on the batteries as it sits here. So now we're getting down to two. So we're going to go ahead and say, if we do this long enough, we're going to say we're going to get two. Um, and this baby's getting a little bit warm. We're getting a two watt bump when we crank up the truck. And I received a three watt bump by changing the accessory port. And I'm using the stock. This is this is tiny gauge, it really is. But for 15 watts, I mean, you don't need a whole lot, but I wonder if you get a little bit more juice if we had a little fatter gauge. But I'm gonna leave this because it's convenient to move in and out of vehicles. And this is probably, my wife doesn't know this, but this is gonna be in her van in the coming months. Um, because she doesn't like radios and this little burger is nice and small and I can stick this out of sight and when we go on road trips I can just whip out the microphone and the whole caboodle is right here she can easily put it out of way when we're not using it but when we're caravanning this will work nicely so originally I was pretty disappointed I first did a, I did a real quick test I mean I was getting six. I mean, sitting here in the other outlet, I was getting six watts out of this radio. It's supposed to do 15. I wasn't happy at all. So now 13. I mean, that's a little bit within the margin of error for cables. Let's put this on a um, last thing. Let's put this on an antenna that's on top of the truck. Now this is. This is RG58 on a 5 8 wave over a quarter wave aftermarket antenna. Um, it's a no-name brand, but I liked it because of the size. It's about 25 inches, 26 inches. So let me crank it up and see how much power we get out of this thing. I think about 13, 13 ones are high. Now, and then we had 12 something on the repeaters. So we're looking at 15 and get 12, four. Now see the SWR is a little bit up there, 1.4. So that's gonna help. The transmitter is probably knocking down the power a little bit because it's getting some reflected power. Let's go with the other one, the high end 22, 12.2. So yeah, we're losing a little bit. Now if we go to the repeaters, what's going to happen with the repeaters? 12.2, but look, the SWR, see we're not losing as much because the SWR is better matched. It's real close there. So, let's see what we got here in 22. Wow, it's almost no, 12.3 I guess, with 1.07 SWR. So, that's another story, antenna matching. Uh, tuning it uh, the lower the SWR the more power you will get out of your rig because it's all going out and you got less coming back down the coax to your radio so interesting results here I'm, uh, I'm a lot happier with 13 versus 6 that's a wildly different number but it looks like I had a bigger difference in outlets here Let's check that one more time. So I'm getting 12 and a quarter right now. So let me just turn this off. 12 and a quarter. Let me go change out the accessory port. This one, snug fit. That might help a little bit. This was a snug fit too. All right, 12 and a quarter. And now we're looking at, let's see, 10, just a hair of a 10. A 20% difference. That's pretty significant. That's pretty significant. So I'm going to go back to the other one. It's an old truck. Go back here, and long last time.
12 and then drop down to oops I guess we're going to go up to go up to the high simplex and with the we're still at 12 with the SWR right there a little bit higher so I can try to lengthen the antenna a little bit and get the simplex up and let the repeater but that's another that's another topic for another video to figure out you know where to fine tune the sucker at I will play with it and see if I can improve that but for now I'm pretty happy like I said that uh, it looks like it's putting out advertised power give or take a little bit uh, I could change like I said I'm going through an adapter so anyway, hopefully this is helpful you can tell it does matter what you have plugged in it does matter to the coax you use uh, the length of it matters some and also the power is the biggest difference getting a good power to your radio will really affect what kind of power you get out of it have a good day